Okay, brothers and sisters, so I know that there are those of you out there who undoubtedly will continue to tote the banner of trans rights and continue to reaffirm the lie that gender affirming care is life saving care. So before you continue to spew that lie, I want you guys to go ahead and check out this video from a, a woman who has gone through a horrific experience. And this is just one of many of these videos that is surfacing where people are getting that supposed life saving care that people want to continue to talk about. And listen, if you don't want to listen to Christians or conservatives of any type, then don't. But if you're not going to listen to us, then what are you going to say when you're hearing these things coming from one of your own? Now, this is going to be a longer video than usual, guys. But believe me when I tell you that this poor woman deserves to be heard. So if you can actually just go ahead and listen to what she has to say, I would really appreciate it. As always, guys, be safe, be good, be blessed. I'll see you when I see you and enjoy the video. Uh, my name's Scott Nugent. I'm a lesbian and I'm a trans man. But my most important role is that of a parent to three incredible children. I'm a mother, a woman who has given birth and carried life. I'm here today to put an end to the idea that medically transitioning children is about human rights. It is not. It's about money. Market research predicts that gender affirming care will generate more than five billion dollars a year in less than a decade. The truth is, is that medical transition is experimental, dangerous, and it doesn't cure anything. In fact, your question, there's only seven studies that stated that medically transitioning children is beneficial and every single one of them has either been modified with not enough time or participants or oops, we were sorry. Yet these are the pamphlets and the studies that are still given to parents currently. And of course, society doesn't know that because you don't cover it. We now have children's hospitals all over Europe, halting and banning all childhood medical transition calling it the worst medical scandal in modern history. Yet here in the United States, we have bigots everywhere. We have transgender people. We have gays and lesbians trying to talk and people that are not trans and not gay and lesbian are calling us bigots. I underwent close to uh, $1 million worth of surgeries and hormone therapies to change from Kelly to Scott, a trans man. And then I almost died in the process. And I certainly have cut many, many years off of my life. I probably won't live long enough to meet my grandkids because I still, to this day, get reoccurring infections. Nobody knows why. But again, 95% of all medical transition is experimental, except for top surgery. We have no idea what's going to happen to these kids because it's never been studied. But we are seeing early onset osteoporosis. We are seeing hearts and lungs the size of 12 year olds. And if you couple that with only long term study that followed these transgender people for 30 years in Sweden, Sweden is the leading country for transgender medicine. Two months ago, they halted and stopped all medicalization of children. Do you know why? Well, there's a documentary that you won't find here in the United States, but they're finding something in addition. Girls spines are not fusing together properly while on puberty blockers. We have 15 year olds walking like this for the rest of their lives and they won't live past 30. But you say he's a bigot. You see, I tried to kill off my female self because I was sold a lie. I was sold that I was actually a man trapped in a woman's body, that my masculine traits and my strong personality were proof that I was really a man. I was told that all my pain and self-loathing would magically disappear. If only I pumped my body with testosterone remove my breasts and alter my genitalia. I was tricked at 42 at a vulnerable place. One day I thought, God, maybe I'm born in the wrong body. I was married to a, a woman who just despised being a lesbian. And one comment of maybe I was born in the wrong body. Next week, I was sitting in front of a trans woman therapist who asked me, how long have you been dressing like a man? At 42, that sentence has changed the trajectory of my life. You guys don't seem to understand that I'm not going to meet my grandkids because of this crap. And you call him a bigot. You see, I was perfect just the way I was. If only I was told and we tell girls, because it's happening to girls way more than boys, is that there is no one way for a woman to be a woman.
And there's no one way for a man to be a man. Why don't we start affirming that it's okay to be who they are? No, what we're doing is, is we're pushing a medical process that if a child gets on it at 14 and lives to 85, that generates $1.5 million in synthetic hormone. Do you guys get that? That doesn't even, that doesn't even cover complications. It doesn't cover surgery. And yet you call him a bigot. And you don't talk to me. You show all of the people, trans women and women. We need to let children have the time to learn to love their natural bodies and embrace their differences. Because the truth is, is that the kids that are wanting to medically transition are the most vulnerable parts of our society. They are the ones that are same-sex attracted. This bigot, he's trying to protect gays and lesbians, future gays and lesbians, but you call, you call him a bigot. They are children that are mentally gifted. They are children that have ADHD. They are children that are mentally ill. They are all the kids that don't belong. You're robbing that time that they need to gain a thick skin. Because at 25, being different, how many same people have done anything major in this world? They're all different people, but you don't realize that until you're a CEO at 25. You're stealing that from them. With gender interventions, there are no take backs. Puberty blockers are not merely a pause button. In fact, the corporation that's telling you puberty blockers are safe, that generates and produces all that Puberty blockers that they say is a pause, it doesn't hurt. In 2003, they were sued by the US government, deemed a criminal enterprise for false advertising and bribery. They paid $874 million like that. The biggest, the biggest payout at the time, more than Oxycontin at the time. This is a company that doesn't have the money to run studies on puberty blockers for children or is it that they know there is no doctor in the world that would sign on it that it's safe? Shame on you for not covering him and me. In fact, Lupron has over 10,000 complaints from children that use them as precocious puberty. Testosterone, it's not reversible. Her son, four months on estrogen, and he might not be able to have babies at 14 because you won't cover it. Are you really gonna put stock in the AAP that follows WPATH, which is supposedly the baseline for care? An entity that not only accepts pushes the idea that Unix is a gender for minors. An agency that is supposed to be the baseline for care has never held up in any court of law anywhere. Yet you won't cover it and you call him a bigot. So I ask that you do the hard thing today. I know this is your industry and God forbid, if you step outside of your, your, your house, your family, your Republican, Democrat, conservative, Republican, and do the right thing. But if you do, I'll tell you one thing. You will be called a bigot today. But those bigots in history will go down as heroes. So are you in the media that can save these kids? Are you gonna do the right thing and cover and investigate and ask questions and interview everybody? Or are you just gonna sit there and record, change women, women, women?